Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> let, me get, let me get situated. All right. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. So, as you guys do know, we don't have a tournament going on at the moment with Wesley So in it. So, I figured I'd go back in time. I went ahead and grabbed the game. Um, and this is bothering me for a second now that I looked real quick. Bam. Okay. Uh, I grabbed, I got a game between Wesley So and Rogelio Antonio Jr., also known as GM Joey on chess.com. So, um, you know, pretty strong guy. I remember when I first started playing chess, I would remember like 2011, 2012, you know, kind of seeing him play and stuff like that. You know, that's back when people were like 24 and 2500 before they like went to like 3400 and everything. It was kind of crazy. But this one is taken from uh, the 2011 uh, Philippines uh, Championship, also known when you get towards the finals as the Battle of the Grandmasters. So, for all of my people in the Philippines, I would say um, Maligiyang Pagdating Sama Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys very much. Metaming Salamat to post on my new note in King my video. Masai Okome Kita Kang Moody. Hello, you lit. Maganangu Maga. Inga Lagi Mabuding Pagbadi. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Um, we will see who is Malakas. And uh, so I got a pretty good one here for you. If you guys are ready to go, let's take a look and see what we have in this game. So we start with D4. We got Knight to F6. We got C4, E6. Now, anybody who watches my channel extensively enough, you have seen this position so many times. So, you know, normally you see a D5, uh, you know, and then you might see like a C6 or even like a bishop to B4. You know, you have many different options. Um, in this particular game, we do see Knight to F3 and then Bishop comes to B4. So we do have the Bogo Indian defense. Uh, and it's just a very active way to get your bishop out. Uh, not like that. It's a very active way to get your bishop out. You know, if you're developing your pieces, why not develop with tempo? Uh, there's really nothing against this particular move. It's not like you can, like, shove a pawn in the way in, in, in the face of black. So, you know, why not? So you have, you know, a couple different options. You can go bishop to d2 uh, and just encourage a trade, or you can just immediately go knight b to d2, which is what we see in the game. Uh, we do have b6 and then a3, uh, you know, press, pressures the issue. Are you going to trade? Are you going to back it up to, you know, maybe like an E7 or something? You definitely don't want to do something like this and then get B4. It's going to be a sad day for you. So we do see Bishop takes D2. And then we have Queen takes D2. Uh, and, you know, you have some options of playing B3, Bishop to B2, and getting Castle Queen side. Even though it's not so common. Okay, I got it. Okay. Uh, we see Bishop to B7. Uh, and then we do have E3. And then Black goes Castle. Now, backing up. It might kind of seem like, you know, I put this bishop on a diagonal. It's not really influencing the king side very much. Like, why don't I just trade here? Well, the thing about it is you have to kind of think all the time that I say. Whenever you are thinking of going into a trade, what are you getting and what is your opponent getting? So, just snapping off this knight for damaging of a pawn structure actually helps white quite a bit. If we were to go into that... You know, we would see bishop takes f3, and then pawn takes f3. And you kind of think like, man, okay, I've done some damage, right? But, you know, you definitely kind of want to stay away from castling uh, because, you know, you're going to be looking at rook to g1. So, yes, you doubled your opponent's pawns, but you have given them a completely open file. And so after e4 is pushed, you have the queen coming in, the bishop is coming in, you know, this bishop can come in. You have a lot of danger in the position. It's definitely, you, you can play through this as black, but... You're just kind of making the situation much harder. So, Rogelio says, hey, man, we're not doing that, so we're going to go ahead and get castled and stay safe. Uh, and then we do see bishop to e2. Knight comes down to e4, and this is asking a question to the queen. So, the queen just sidesteps to c2, which is a very Catalan type of move. So, even way back as 2011, Wesley Self still had that Catalan mind. Uh, and then we do have f5. And, you know, a lot of the times, uh, you know, this move can actually be kind of annoying when it comes to like, you know, ensconcing a knight in the middle of the board. A lot of the times, you know, you don't normally see this bishop coming here, but you'll see like a c6 and a d5, an e6 and an f5 situation. And then you have like these two squares, uh, you know, with pawns, just basically just cementing this knight in the board. Uh, and so, uh, you know, if you do capture back, let's say with a bishop or a knight or something, you do have to worry about one of the pawns taking. So that can be, you know, that can be an issue. Uh, so we do have b4 by white, you know, just trying to gain as much space as possible. Uh, we do have a5, rook comes over to b1, pawn takes b4, pawn takes b4, uh, and then we do have the novelty of the game, which is d6. It's kind of surprising because d6 is a very common move, 
Uh, but, I mean, you're just really trying to slow down the advancement of these pawns. You definitely don't want to be in a situation where, you know, white is just basically just pushing their pawns all in your face. Uh, and, like, you know, doing some type of something like this. So white does castle. We see rook down to f6. So we have a rook lift by black. We got d5. Uh, and then we have rook to h6. And, I mean, it kind of seems like white, you know, black is putting a little bit of pressure you know, maybe this queen can kind of slide in and stuff like that. So if you do want to pause the video and see what black, we'll see what white actually has the ability to play in this position. It is a very, very strong move with a very, very strong idea behind it. Uh, go ahead and pause. Am I blurry? No, I think I'm good. Uh, go ahead and pause the video uh, and see if you can guess this move. Okay, cool. So, um, I think a lot of you guys, uh, and actually Wesley Soul was thinking the same way. It's like, okay, all of my pieces are doing good. The only piece that I haven't really moved is my bishop on c1. So, you know, bishop to b2 seems like a logical move. And it's definitely not a bad move at all. Um, and this is actually what Wesley Soul picked in the game. But there is a very, very strong move, um, and it is actually knight to d4. So that was the move I was looking for. Knight to d4 actually makes it very annoying for black, simply because... This is the base of the pawn chain for this pawn, uh, and you are you do have a direct threat of just taking on e6 with the knight, uh, and now you have like a super duper octopus in the middle of the board. So this forces black to play a very specific way. Um, you're, you're going to uh, you know possibly see pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5, but then you do like I said have knight takes f5, uh, and you know rook to f6 will probably make the most sense in the position. Uh, and you do see like the explosive knight takes g7, king takes g7, and then you have f3. And just for spite, the computer wants you to throw in rook to a2 uh, and attack this queen right here. Uh, but you just have rook to b2, and this is mag <laughs> Magalink. <laughs> Uh, this is great uh, for white. Um, you know, you really want this bishop to be on this diagonal um, and pinning this this rook down. You do have this knight on pre, so you have a lot of problems in your position as black. So that's just one of the sample variations. But the very real threat with knight to d4 is just simply taking a pawn off the board. Uh, and it's really kind of hard to push this pawn because this pawn will be dropping. So, you know, e5 is not very uh, encouraged. But like I said, we did see a uh, bishop uh, coming to b2 here. We do have knight down to a6, and, and that can be a little bit annoying because you are attacking this, this lonely pawn over here on b4. Bishop comes back to a1, and then you see e5. And now you see the situation has very much changed because now this e5 pawn push has made it very inconvenient for black because this knight doesn't have the ability to go to d4, and this bishop is actually very blunted. So it's definitely not like white is losing now, but you know there there is a gigantic change to the position. We do see bishop to d3. Bishop comes back to c8, and it's not the worst case scenario, but black is kind of like trying to like put white in a false sense of security. Uh, and it might seem like you can win a pawn in this position, and you can, but it actually comes at a very steep price. Bishop taking e4 allows pawn takes e4, queen takes e4, and then queen comes to f6. And, you know, bishop to f5 is going to be coming uh, pretty much no matter how you cut it. Uh, and so you don't really have a lot of moves uh, for this queen. You really are probably going to have to try to back up here. Uh, but like I said, the bishop can come here. And once you push the pawn, I mean, you have a lot of danger. So this rook lift actually makes a lot of sense. Not like it did it before, but it just becomes very powerful. Uh, after bishop to c8, we do see g3. Just trying to create some lift for your king and trying to, you know, give your king a little space to operate. And you know, trying to, uh, you know, nullify a lot of the threats that might be going on on these files. We do see queen to e7. Knight comes to h4, and then Rogelio decides, hey, man, I don't like your knight. I'm going to go ahead and sack the exchange. Rook takes h4, queen, I mean, pawn takes h4, uh, and then we do see queen takes h4. And this, this can look a little scary because you're thinking, man, all right, wait a minute. Like, if I can push the pawn here, like this bishop kind of comes in. Maybe I might have a rook over here to type of thing, you know, in, in a dream case scenario, but... You know, if you're if you don't have your nerves, this can definitely look kind of scary for you as white. So we do see F3 uh, trying to attack this knight. Uh, we see the knight coming back to G5. We see F4 continuing to attack. Uh, the knight comes back to E4. We see pawn takes E5, and 
even though this is like by far the best move to make in the position, I think this is actually a very hard move to make because as of the moment, this pawn is protecting, you know, a little bit of real estate right here. And so it kind of seems like after pawn takes e5, uh, you know, you kind of gave up a little bit. You do give up queen to g4 with check, but you Wesley so was able to calculate that these checks don't really go anywhere. Queen does come to g2. King to h1 is fine as well. Queen takes g2. King takes g2. And you can see with this queen trade, like the threats are very, very minimized. But it does allow knight to d2. So that can be kind of annoying. But you already are up the exchange. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have your double bishop. So, I mean, you know, it's not the end of the world. Bishop does come to c3. We see knight takes f1. Rook takes f1. We see knight back to b8. And something I want you to notice that's really kind of crazy <laughs> is that literally all of these pieces are on their home square. Now. And we are 27 moves into the game. So it's like, that's crazy how literally we've gotten back. <laughs> this piece moved here and moved back. This piece moved. Uh, I think it was just knight to a6 and came back. This rook never moved. Uh, so it's just really interesting how you have that position. Anyways, moving on. We do see e6. Uh, and now we just have a pass pawn. Um, and we definitely have some threats in the position taking this pawn. This rook can possibly swing up and, and come over. This king has a little bit of a square to go to. There's actually a lot of pressure on this king side. Uh, and the, you know, the black pieces are kind of on the queen side just hanging out, not really helping in the defense. We do see rook to a3. And normally this, this, uh, <laughs> this move can be very annoying because whenever you have two bishops next to each other, the rook usually has a way to attack both of them. But we do see uh, rook to c1. We got g6. We got b5. And as you guys can see, Neither one of these pieces can really move anywhere. <laughs> I mean, these pawns are literally making it to where like these pieces uh, on black black side of the board are basically useless. I hate when I get my pieces trapped on a back ring like that. It's really annoying. Uh, and then we do have c5 trying to free up some space, but we do see pawn takes uh, c6. Bishop takes e6, and then we do have c7. And it is actually in this position uh, that Rogelio Antonio, uh, <laughs> Rogelio Antonio Jr. resigns the game. So, Malakas C. Wesley. So, and I mean, I think you guys can kind of see, like, based on what I said earlier, you know, this knight really doesn't have anywhere to go. I mean, you can't really go to A6 because it's just lost. You can't go to C6 because it's just lost as well. You really can't go here because you're just going to be queening the pawn. And so, unfortunately, it actually gives knight to c6 as the best move for black. And, I mean, you guys can see it as just completely losing a piece. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's just it's just nasty. I mean, rook is going to come up. Uh, but, I mean, you know, you're going to be, you know, looking at just doing whatever in the bishop to take. And, I mean, you definitely have, uh, you know, some ways to uh, protect. Uh, well, no, not really. But you see, you see what I mean. There's... There's just too many pieces for white. Bishop comes down to e2. You might see rook over here or something like that, but you have the ability to protect. The bishop is going to come here with check. It's just uh, it's just not where you want to be at all. Um, so it's a really nice, uh, straightforward win by Wesley So. Like I said, Rogelio, he did make it kind of interesting there in the middle, sacking his exchange, but it ended up, I think really it probably would have been better for him not to, not to trade queens. Uh, let me see. Where's the, uh, where's the queen trade at? Yeah. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do in this position. Cause I mean, this bishop, this bishop and this queen are on this piece. So I mean, you kind of have to go into the trade, but, uh, it kind of, it kind of leveled out his attack. So, but anyways, I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by and I'll see y'all next time.